Hello, welcome to Topper Machine. I'm Josh Topper. Um, many of you who have been following and watching my videos have seen there's been a lot of things going on this last month uh, with my mom having a stroke, um, got into some uh, top secret proprietary uh, prototype work, um, and that's all done. Um, so lots been going on. In fact, this afternoon I have my state boiler inspection for the final inspections on the Baker traction engine. So lots been going on. And uh, so if you already are subscribed, thank you. And if you're not, please subscribe, stay with us and see what's next. Uh, we do a lot of really cool uh, manual machining, manual machining only here in Topper Machine. So um, please subscribe and stay with us and see what's next. Uh, today's little job is a hydraulic cylinder. Um, customer brought it in. He already cut the ends off. He plans on welding this back up himself. Don't know why. I should probably do it myself, but I've done many of these cylinders over the years um, and haven't had any leaked yet. But uh, he went to repack it and uh, he galled up the threads. So he uh, picked up a new cylinder tube and a new packing nut, a gland nut. And uh, so we're going to set this up in the, my medium sized Monarch here, my 18 CU, with the steady rest. And we're going to thread this end. We've got to put a chamfer on the inside of the tube um, for the packing to, to seal. And um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move you in. We're going to show you how to do the, to set up the steady rest, how I set up the steady rest. And then uh, we'll do the threading and, and probably end the video there so I can go focus on the steam engine. Um, so let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we do is we measure our, our piece of material, see how long it is and what we need it to, where we need our steady rest to be. And I need my piece is 16 inches long, so I need to be less than that. I need, I'm going to want to be about 12 inches, which puts me right here. So we take our piece or our rag here and clean off the ways. That's the very first thing because nothing worse than having a piece of something under your steady rest and then you clamp it down and you damage your ways. Um, nobody wants that. Just wipe down my jaws a little bit too to keep everything clean. So let's get the steady rest up there. And make sure you got the clearance you need. And I'm going to run it right about there. So you tighten her down, clamp her in place. And in fact, let me uh, double check here that you're seeing everything. Move my camera a little. Or my my screen so I can see. Yeah, it looks like you can see pretty good. Next thing, get everything out of my way. Open her up. Loosen your locking nuts and back off your back everything off. I know this is a four inch or so tube, and I know this steady rest goes to about four and a half. I'm going to back them off most of the way, as long as they go the right way. And I'll throw your material up there. And looks like I got to back it off a little more. Okay, so you want to make sure you're just spin it around a few times. 
and look to see how close it is. And it looks pretty darn close. Make sure your chuck is tight. There we go. Close your steady rest. I gotta back it off a little more. Like I said, this is how I've always done it. It could be wrong, but I've never had issues doing it this way. So we start up the lathe. And I see a little wobble there, but we'll adjust our bearings. So everything's touching. Everything looks pretty good. Actually, let's just check this. I can go a little more on this one. You want even contact on every bearing. This thing will center itself, but I'm gonna run it a little slow. We'll slow her down and finish tightening it up. And just make sure they're all turning good. And I feel good about that. So what you're doing is holding it from vibrating. That's the big thing. Holding it vibrating and holding it straight. So now that we look pretty good, we'll, uh, we'll start cutting. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut in my thread relief using my grooving insert. And so I'll just bring it in, zero my readout, and I'm going in an inch and three eighths of thread. That's it. That's all this needs. Um, where did I set the nut? And actually, I think I could probably get away with less than that even. It needs an inch. By the time you put the gland nut on there, you can't tighten it down anymore. So we'll go an inch and a quarter. He asked if I could go a little less, and so we can. So let's uh, groove this in. Okay, now I got my thread relief. I need to change this insert and then we'll move on to uh, threading. It's 12, 12 threads per inch and uh, I'm just gonna start cutting. I'm not even gonna measure this because it just doesn't pay and I can just test fit it until I get it exactly where I want it. I can take as little as possible. Make sure your compound is set at 29 and a half degrees. Your compound on the lathe. I don't know if I'm too close or not right now. And, uh, Set your 12 threads per inch, and we go from there. Okay, so what we do here is you got your compound set at your 29 and a half. Yep. We back the compound out. Um, I don't know if you can see this, let me. Okay, you can sort of see this. Back your compound out, so you bring it out, and then bring it back in to a zero, or you can set your zero, but bring it in a little bit to take out an east play. Next, start it up, touch it off using your cross slide, and just touch it, and there we are. 
That is your zero point. And you can set your zero there, down on your dot hand wheel, or if you got a digital readout, you can set it there also, which I now have that technology, so I will do that. Now, turn your compound in for your first cut. And of course, now I got the camera on the wrong side. You can't see my thread dial over here, but I'll, I'll shoot a little bit of that too. So you watch for your numbers to come around and you catch a number and thread away. Back off your cross slide, take it back. Bring it back to zero, your cross slide, and then turn your compound in for your next cut. And catch a number on the way by, run your thread. And you can use oil if you want. I sometimes do and I sometimes don't. Let me move the camera so you can see the thread dial and everything on this side. Okay, so I know this might be a little difficult to see. We got my cross slide zeroed, my compound. We're going to go in another 20. And then here's the thread dial. See the numbers on here. And you can go between the numbers perfectly, but if you go a quarter of the way, that starts another thread. So catch your number, run it in. Get to the end of your thread, back out your compound, bring it back to start, back to zero, and then take your next pass. Catch a number, Bring it back to zero. Now I'm going to stop and move the camera again so you can see the actual threading action. Now I'm going to take one pass without feeding the compound in at all, just a little cleanup pass. And you see how the tool pressure, it still takes some. Now let's back it out and see if our nut starts. And it just starts, just barely. So we got a little more to go. Now we'll just take a little bit at a time. I'm five thousandths. Bring myself back into zero on the compound or cross slide and catch the number on the way by. Zero and this will be a cleanup pass again. Let's see what we do. is making a beautiful thread on this material. Come on. Getting closer. We'll take another five and clean that up and see where we're at. We're just going to take a little at a time until we get there. I said I could could have measured the internal threads, but this is just as easy. Or we could have measured over wires, but you got the nut, dial it in until you get it. It takes more time to sit there and measure it out. There's our cleanup pass.
Let's see what. Take a file and clean up that a little bit. Not quite there yet. It is starting better, so we'll just keep on working it in. So I'm having some trouble with this, and I you know you probably can't see it very well, but there is a burr right in there, and I've been filing on it a bit. I'm going to keep working on it until I get that burr out of there, but that's holding me up. I think my threads are perfect as far as depth there, but I can't get over that burr. So I'm gonna work on cleaning that up and we'll make sure it fits. All right, finally got it. So there it is. It goes on, it, um, you know, it was kind of weird. I was fighting with it, fighting with it, and this gland nut must be Chinesium. It's pretty bad. The threads are pretty awful. I mean, it's, it's just coarse. Um, nowhere as near like my threads here, just absolutely beautifully smooth. But um, when I got into it, there's a set screw hole right here, goes through. There was a huge burr inside there that I was fighting with. If you can see that. And what I did was I took one of my die files, this is a little round file, pointed round file, tiny little thing, and just worked those threads until I got through that. And then it finally started to go and uh, it got better and then I polished it a little, my threads just a little more, just to touch them up and absolutely perfect. Goes on beautifully, nice and tight, light, but smooth. Um, considering how bad that nut was, but um, so this, I'm a few days later, as, as you can see I changed my clothes. Um, I had my boiler inspection on Friday for the baker and uh, Friday afternoon, I was shooting this Friday morning, I had an emergency job come in, so I had to pull this out, I just threw this back up to uh, touch it up, finish it off um, today, but I had that emergency job come in, so I had to pull everything out, do that, and then I had uh, my boiler inspector showed up, so we had to do the boiler inspection, and, and we passed 180 PSI in Wisconsin, um, so all's good. Now i uh, start on the engine restoration, but uh, um, I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, so with that we'll end here, but uh, please check out my website, www.toppermachine.com. And please like, subscribe, and share. Stay with us. See what's next. Till next time, get out in your shop and get it done right the first time.